Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the new 172nd scale VK3601H from Armory Models. Let's have a look. For sprue, we've got our various turrets and gun barrels. Um, two optional turrets in this kit with, I believe, looks like four choices of gun barrel. F a fair amount of flash. Big chunk of it right here. But other than that, it's mostly mostly thin fine stuff so it wouldn't be too hard armory models don't hide from the fact that they are a short run company so a little bit of work is required you know no fancy slide molding so you will have to drill open your muzzles on your guns but we get some nice detail around the hatches Even nice little, nice little jerry can jack. Commander's hatch and the episcopes look pretty good. Looks like a little bit of stress on some of these parts here with a little bit of white, but nothing looks to be deformed, so we should be okay. bit of a mold line on our gun barrels so we just have to scrape sand that down a little bit of course this this vehicle kind of borders between actual functional prototype and sort of what if so you could always just get some uh, metal barrels and slap on whatever you want so. Not perfect, but not too bad so far. Next, we got our hull, which is done flat pack style. No fancy slide molded one piece tubs here. Still a little bit of flash. And it looks like we may have lost a piece here. Something, well, looks like something might have broken off there. But some nice hinge detail and little hatches on the bottom. The textured surfaces, the diamond plate or anti skid on the fenders looks very nice, very in scale. A little bit of cleanup going to be needed around the parts. But we got a nice little lip around the periphery, so hopefully aid with lining everything up. Looks like we got some detail on the inside of that hatch as well, so I guess we could have that posed open perhaps. All right. Next, we got our typically German plethora of wheels. This was supposed to be this was one of the prototypes that would eventually become the Tiger One. So, of course, this design did not win, but not for trying for having lots of wheels. The sprocket is very reminiscent of the Tiger. Now the sprue attachments are right on some of the guide teeth, so you want to be very careful getting those off. The rest of the wheels look pretty good. Not, not as much flash on these as on some of the other parts, which is nice. A little bit of cleanup to do. Nice to see 
a definitive rim for the uh, rubber road wheel. Airfix could learn something from these. And we've got all separate torsion arms. So want to take our time, make sure all those are nice and straight. Beautiful bolt detail on those sprockets. Not too bad. Next are tracks. We've got Lincoln length tracks at 72nd scale here and these look pretty good. There's some, maybe a few, few th I'm sure if all the tracks are supposed to be molded hollow in some spots or if they just got a little bit thin, but a few little thin spots, but, but overall very sharply molded. This, in terms of flash, this is definitely the best sprue. So they're probably putting all their effort into this one because having to clean off flash from all those little individual track links would be a pain in the butt. But looks like they've put a little extra effort into this sprue. So that's nice to see. Almost makes you wonder if these would fit onto a Tiger One. They have a potential lucrative market there. But those look really nice. And lastly, we've got our towing eyelets and shovels, and pioneer tools, hatches, ball mounts for the machine guns, headlights, starter cranks, some spare track, which is just as nice as the rest of the track. A little ends for our machine guns and a little very delicate antenna, which has eh, got a little break in it, but can always do some stretch sprue for that. S hooks, all the basic little details that go on most German tanks. Separate hatches, so we can, with interior detail. So, for those of you who like to add interiors to your 72nd scale vehicles, you got an interior side of the hatch. So a little bit less work you have to do. That's a nice touch. And a little sprue of photo etch. So we got some could be engine grills and some straps. Very, very fine pieces on here. Add a little bit of more detail than what we got, which is nice to see. Looks very clean. And our instructions. Black and white, laser, regular old paper. Nice big sprue map. Of course, our parts are not numbered on the sprue, so this is going to be your guide to finding everything. Our photo etch as well. So I'll start off, lower hull goes together. Some of our hatches, and yeah, we do got some nice interior detail on these little escape hatches, so you could have you have this tank wide open. I know one particular modeler who's quite fond of adding interiors to his small scale tanks. I'd see him doing a really good job with this one. Up, upper hull goes on. This turret. Here's where you're really going to want to take some extra time, make sure all these torsion arms are straight and lined up so you don't have your wheels all wonky and over the place. Then all of our wheels go in place. Wheels and more wheels and then 
Same thing for the opposite side. And our tracks, so, you know, long sections, short sections, individual links around the wheels. So hopefully everything matches up well and we're not going to be short any links. So left and left and right sides. Get our fenders with their support brackets going on. Spare tracks going on the front. Fenders for the opposite side. Some more little photo etch clasp detail and tools. More little tiny photo etch bits. So. And depending on which turret you want to go with, you've got two sets of instructions here. You have the 3601 turret or you have the H2 turret and I believe the first production slash prototype Tiger 1s had this turret on it. So I guess that's a had this gone into full production they probably would have gone with this. But turret and turret roof all goes together. Gun mantlet. Commanders, cupola, hatches, even little photo etch guards for the periscopes. And then optional gun barrels for one turret or the other. And you've got your 10.5 centimeter howitzer for infantry support. You've got your taper bore gun, which was something that was experimented with but didn't see a lot of use. Basically, you would use a subcaliber ammunition so that as it traveled down the barrel, the barrel would squeeze down, increasing the pressure and increasing the velocity for a given barrel. Or you just make the barrel longer, and we got our 7.5 centimeter L70, made infamous on the Panther. In reality, it would have been that gun, but hey, have fun with it. And the H2 turret, of course, you also have the KWK L56 88 millimeter gun you could put on there too for your ultimate what if tiger. So you can definitely, a nicely detailed kit you can have a lot of fun with. Now, no color guide because this is a sort of what if vehicle. So you can kind of have fun with it if you want to do German gray or the later war camouflage. But we do have a little tiny decal sheet with some German crosses. Hardly any carrier, nice in register, shouldn't have any problem with those. So the 172nd scale VK3601 from Armory, a little rough around the edges as to be expected with the shorter run type kits, but that being said, a nicely detailed little kit of a relatively obscure and esoteric subject. Just having interiors molded onto the hatches is a nice little touch. So if you are a avid scratch builder, you could deck out the entire inside of this vehicle, have everything opened up. Um, or if you just wanted to pose a couple of crew figures with their heads sticking out, have the vehicle as an operational example. Definitely an interesting kit of a unique vehicle. Thank you very much to Armory Models for sending this kit along for us to have a look at. If you guys like to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button, give us a like. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you next time.